Hey guys, uh, thanks for joining us today. Um, I'm just gonna about to start the uh, calling video on calling coyotes here in southern Wisconsin. Um, I'm gonna first show you guys kind of what I look for when I pick a spot, um, the conditions that I'm looking for, and a few of the things that um, I guess they're gonna decide whether I go and where I go and why I do it. So. Um, none of this stuff is scientifically proven. This is just what works for me, and I'd um, love to share it with all of you. So feel free to ask questions. Um, I'm happy to answer any questions and uh, help everybody get more fur in the truck. Thanks for watching. All right, guys. So first I'm going to kind of break down here how, I, how I'm going to set up a stand um, before I even get there. So uh, as you see here on Google Maps, this is the spot that we're hunting in this video. Um, first and foremost, most important thing about hunting um, a spot for me is going to be the wind. Um, first, I'm going to look at the direction. Um, I'm always looking for either a semi-crosswind, which would be what I would say would be here, blowing out of the s southwest, or west would probably be okay, or northwest. But uh, after that, I'm looking at miles per hour. Um, I think a lot of people overlook the the wind speed but my rule of thumb for wind speed is if it's under 10 miles an hour it's ideal if it's 10 to 15 miles an hour I'm trying to get out of it somewhere in a bottom or in a valley or somewhere where I can get tucked in out of the wind and also the coyotes would be out of the wind too but um, and if it's over 15 miles an hour I'm not going um, I'm sure everyone has their own opinion on that but just for me 15 miles and over, I'm not going. It's just how it's gonna. That's just how it is for me. Uh, I've never, I've rarely ever even seen a coyote and had success um, in conditions um, with more wind than that. So, anyways, so we were calling this spot right here. Okay, obviously, this any major, somewhat major portion of cover anywhere in southern Wisconsin is going to have coyotes in it. Um, obviously this is a big huge block of cover and to the north here there's a lot more cover. So um, we are calling this on a straight west wind which is perfect and you can see this little patch of trees here by my mouse. That's where we were sitting and we had the call right here upwind of us. Okay, so that's probably, it was, the call was about probably 100 yards upwind of us, which is really important as well, is getting the call upwind of you, and you always want to be able to see the call because they will come to it sometimes, but you always want to have the call upwind of you, so you are to the downwind side of it, okay, because coyotes are always going to circle to the downwind side. I've seen, I'm going to say one in every 50 stands you'll have coyotes that will not circle. Um, it just doesn't happen very often. I would just always set yourself up to be able to shoot the downwind side of your call. So, sitting here, call's here, wind is here. We're expecting these coyotes to come either down this waterway or somewhere off this other side over here. Okay, somewhere over here. It's pretty bulletproof because the wind's blowing right back towards the the buildings. So, and this is all wide open. We can see all of this. So, it it really sets up good, which is definitely to our advantage here. So that's basically how I set up a stand. It's always going to be a crosswind or a semi-crosswind, which would be kind of if you're facing straight ahead and the wind's blowing, um, kind of hitting you in the left cheek, um, blowing back over your right shoulder. That'd be what I would call a semi-crosswind, um, and I like to call those winds. Um, other, I will not call a wind in my face, um, just because I believe that from my experience. When you call with the wind in your face, coyotes tend to circle a lot more. Um, and like I said, I'm speaking for my area and where I hunt. Um, I'm sure that there's people out there that have places that never get called, never get hunted. And I'm sure they might just come right in, but um, that's not the case here. So these coyotes are smart. Um, they all are, but sometimes um, you have to work for them a little bit. So anyways, enough yapping, and I'll get into the video now and show you exactly how this stand breaks down.
Right here, Dad. Right here. Get on him. Get ready. Right here. Right here. Right here, Dad. Ready. Stop him. Whoa! 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 There, I got him. I rolled him. There's the other one. We get him. Oh, sorry, I had to drop the camera to kill him. But uh, you want to see him hopping? Yeah. He was hopping. All I was just ready to shoot, and you shot. No, you Somebody shot. shot. You shot, you first. shot first. No, I didn't. Yeah, you did. You shot first, and then I shot at the second one. Did we get the second one? I think so. I he's, think he's behind that second bale. I thought I would just get... Oh, did you shoot that one? I shot the far one because I was just going to let you shoot the first one. Did you one. shoot first? No. No, you shot first. <laughs> I didn't even think I shot. I, shot, I <laughs> thought I shot second. How about I dropped the camera and rolled him? <laughs> I didn't even see him coming. I know, apparently. I watched him coming. It's dusk. Come right across that f***ing <laughs> open. You have to tell me when they're coming. That's all right. <laughs> get hey, down across. we got them. tell me what... Huh? We got them. Yeah, we got them. <laughs> Today. I got it. So that oh, was about three minutes into pup distress. That crack. was. Look at the crack of my glasses. So we ended up getting that dog killed right there. Yeah. Sorry for the uh, kind of a shit show there, but <laughs> hey, that's how it goes in your coyote hunt. I hate to break it Look to everybody. Lens. You break your glasses? My glasses lens is broke from bullets <laughs> flying at me. <laughs> Casings. Are you serious? <laughs> Casings are flying at me. I couldn't shoot. <laughs> oh, shit. Matt, how did we kill that second one? I think I got lucky. You hit him at like... Matt hit that second dog. I'm guessing that's... He was right out behind that bale when I saw him go... I the first time. <laughs> he was probably... That was probably all 400 you know yards. Why? We rolled him you out there. I shot first. Hey guys, thanks for watching that video. Um, as you saw, that stand kind of happened a little bit fast, and those dogs came running in as fast as they could run right, right at us. And uh, Matt and my dad weren't quite on the same page. Um, they tried to time up their shots. Matt shot a little bit quicker. And um, anyways, you saw how it went down. But that's gonna happen. Um, everybody who's kind of hunted, and if you're gonna plan on getting into it, it's gonna happen. I promise you. Um, so just to recap, kind of so. I did two sequences of rabbit distress. I don't think it matters really which one you do or how you do them. Um, that means I'm turning on the rabbit. I'm playing it at various volumes. I'm going up and down, playing it for three to five minutes tops. Um, then I'm shutting it off and sitting quiet for five minutes probably before I start another one and doing the same thing. Um, then I go into my kill sequence when I think it's dark enough. Um, I know in here I said that I start calling at 4.45, but... Um, basically, that's when the sun goes went down that day. So as soon as the sun goes down, that's when I start feeling comfortable calling. Um, but I will not start to call before that. Um, like I said, everyone has their own way of doing it. I'm sure there's people that have set success before that, but that's just what I do. Um, I'm putting all my eggs in one basket for one stand at night, um, and I'm going to kill, hopefully, one coyote. Um, but anyway, so I went into my kill sequence, which is my kill sequence I consider is my... Female yodel howl, male howl, and then pup distress. And obviously you saw during the pup distress those dogs came running in. Um, more times than not, that's when I see them come in. Um, I've seen them come in after the yodel howl. I've seen them come in after the male. I've seen them come in a lot of times in the quiet after the pup distress too. So that's something to keep in mind when you're on a stand. Just because you do your pup distress and you stop it doesn't mean you're out of the game yet. A lot of times in that five minutes after is when we see a lot of coyotes. Um, I have killed a lot of them that time. Um, I'm going to do another video that goes into what I do after that stuff if this doesn't work. Um, just what I do. And um, But more times than not, this is what works for me. And occasionally I have to go in to do a little bit more, but for the most part, that's what works for me. So 
Um, thanks for watching, but feel free to drop comments, ask questions, um, whatever you guys need. I'm happy to help, and hopefully everybody puts more dogs in the truck.